All right. Cheers, everybody. We are here at Future Cannabis Project. Super important day to day, uh, full of information, important guest. And today we have Samir Punja with a great presentation for us on the four methods of spreading hop latent viroid. So he does have some slides. And with that, I'm going to allow him to uh, do what he does best. Cheers, everybody. All right. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm here to talk about uh, hop latent viroid, which is a major threat to the cannabis industry and, and the ways in which it spreads. And towards the end of my talk, I'll try to address some of the ways in which we can manage this uh, devastating uh, pathogen. And this first slide just indicates the collaborators that we work with. There's a number of LPs and uh, other companies that are involved in getting this research moving forward. So this is where we do most of the work. It's a greenhouse production system. Um, and whatever we find in this environment, I think will be applicable to whether you're growing indoors and potentially also if you're uh, managing cannabis outdoors. And um, just for those of you that may not be familiar, this is a very unique pathogen, a pathogen that attacks plants primarily. Uh, we don't know viroids that infect animals or any other group of um, organisms. And it's unique in that it's an RNA molecule, but it's extremely, extremely small. Um, you can see the size dimensions here. 50 nanometers means it's five one hundredths of a micron. And a micron is 10 to the minus six of a meter. So you can imagine how tiny these things are. In fact, you can't really see them uh, except, except when you use an electron microscope. And even then, it's a, it's a problem to actually visualize uh, what they are. So... Um, with that, I think you'll see that this particular viroid does cause a number of diseases on different kinds of plants, such as tomato and potato and peach and so on. About 30 different viroid diseases are known that affect, um, are caused by, by viroids. So here's uh, sort of the first thing you may see uh, as far as symptoms that are due to hop latent viroid. On your left is infected plant and on the right, a healthy plant. This is of a very highly susceptible genotype. You don't always see this dramatic stunting. You may see reduced growth, but not um, to this extent. This is a nice side-by-side -side comparison. It shows you the shorter inner nodes and obviously the more bushy sort of uh, plant habit that uh, you can look out for if you're trying to see whether you've got um, hop latent viroid. Here's another example. This is now when the plants are getting into flower. This is two weeks into flower. And again, on your left, you can see the, the somewhat uh, smaller leaf, uh, sort of the stunted size compared to the healthy one on the right. But, you know, you remove the healthy plant and you may have problems looking at an infected plant, not knowing it's infected unless you've got a comparison. So you've got to make these comparisons between plants that you think are infected with a healthy plant. And that's when you'll start to see the, the impact that this viroid is, is having on, on cannabis. So this is an early flower. And as the plant advances, this is now week three in flower. You can sort of see the smaller flower size, the smaller bracts, the smaller leaves. It's more, more or less a stunted growth that will tell you that this potentially has um, hop latent viroid in it. Here's again a really good side by side. This is now four weeks into flower. And again, if you didn't really have that healthy plant on the right, uh, you may look at that shorter plant and say, okay, well, maybe I just need to boost the lights or give it some fertilizer not knowing that actually it's got hop latent viroids. So it's important to make these comparisons between what you consider a really healthy plant and one that may have hop latent viroid uh, in terms of symptomology. And then of course, once you get up into flower closer to harvest, really what you're seeing is a stunting of the growth. There's almost a shrinkage happening. You've got plants that are 30 to 40% size compared to the healthy plants as you see here in these two particular um, strains that are, that are being grown. And then when you finally get closer to flower there, you can see again, you know, other than the, the shorter size, the smaller stature, uh, the flowers would look okay if you didn't realize that you've got healthy plants on the left there that are producing at least twice as much uh, material and foliage as compared to the, to the infected. So it's important to make these side-by-side -side comparisons for healthy and, um, and diseased. 
Now, the root systems are also affected. Here again, you see healthy plant on your left, infected on the right, two different uh, genotypes. So the root ball mass is smaller. The extent of root growth is, is reduced, as you can see with the arrows. And so overall, it's not just the foliage, but it's also the underground parts of the plant that are affected overall. And so clearly that's going to impact your yield. It's going to impact how much flower you can pull off. It'll impact the size of the flower. It'll impact, uh, as you'll see in a few minutes, THC and CBD levels because you've got a, a smaller uh, underperforming underperforming plant compared to the healthy plant. And of course, finally, when you look at the dry weight or the mass of flowers, these are flowers that are um, the entire inflorescence has been cut off. And again, on the right, infected, on the left, healthy. And a much, much reduced flower size, much reduced overall yield and dry weight from, uh, from the infection. Now, under a very, very high-powered electron uh, micrograph, uh, what you see uh, when you compare, for example, the, the RNA of a, of a regular uh, virus, a virus that affects, let's say, bacteria, which is labeled here T7 DNA, you see the size in terms of the length of this particular um, a string of, of, of DNA, uh, as you see here. Look at the hop latent viroid or, or the similar viroid which affects a uh, potato the size, as you see here, is tiny. It's, it's almost invisible when you compare it to the, to the normal um, size of, a, of an RNA or DNA from a virus. So you can see here this little squiggly line that's, that's labeled potato spindle tuber viroid is extremely small. And yet this particular viroid is causing major problems for the cannabis industry in, in Canada and, nor and in, in the US. So how does something this small create such a problem for the, for the plant? Well, the first thing the viroid is doing is it's replicating. It's, it's producing millions of copies of itself. And to do that, it's using all of the energy and all of the enzymes and all of the, the machinery in the plant. And so it's, it's actually taking uh, yield away from the plant by replication. In addition, that particular small, tiny uh, RNA of the viroid interacts with the DNA in the plant and causes genes to be expressed differently or regulated upwards or regulated downwards. And then you get uh, production of these symptoms. And there's a phenomenon that's called R RNA silencing, which we think is probably taking place in the plant. And what that means is that the RNA of the viroid shuts off the RNA in the plant. And the RNA is what produces the enzymes and the proteins in the plant. And so literally what you're doing is you're shutting down parts of the the machinery or the operation of the plant in order to allow this viroid to replicate. And when it does that, you start to see the symptoms of stunting and reduced root growth and reduced flower development and so on and so forth. We still don't know enough about symptom production. We're still looking at various uh, ways in which we can determine how this viroid interacts with the, uh, with the cannabis plant. Now to detect hop latent viroid, there's uh, many methods out there. Uh, we use what's called a PCR gel method. And what you'll see here, and in many of the slides that follow, are these, these white bands. These white bands indicate the presence of hop latent viroid using our testing method. Um, there's many testing methods out there. Um, the preferred methods are what we call quantitative PCR. Uh, this is a, a method that gives you a number uh, in terms of how intense is the the presence of the viroid, either method is, is quite acceptable. We use the gel method because it's much easier to visualize and it's gonna be easier for me to show you that uh, the viroid is actually present in the plant. So in this gel, what you're seeing here are samples of leaves, lower leaves, middle leaves, top leaves, and roots. And all of these four um, tissues have the viroid um, in them. So this is the gel that we create after we run a PCR. Uh, reaction to show the, the presence of the viroid. Now here's again a similar gel. Uh, wherever you see these white bands uh, means that the hop latent viroid is present. This indicates a whole slew of these uh, genotypes or strains that we've compared and every one of them uh, with the exception of this one right here has um, hop latent viroid in it. And the arrow down here points to the fact that it's also found in the roots. And that would explain the, the reduced um, root size. 
So this viroid that we have up here in Canada um, was interesting because it showed 100% sequence homology. In other words, it's identical to a hop latent strain from Colorado uh, and hemp growing outdoors and from hops in China. So what this is telling us is this viroid seems to be the same everywhere we look. And it may be that it's been spreading from some source over the years and now is present in cannabis um, in North America. But we need to do some more work to figure out where, where, where it originated from. Now, if you've got mother plants, which everybody does, and you've got these plants that you want to test to see um, if it's got hop latent viroid in it, symptoms are not going to be obvious. These mother plants do not show very obvious symptoms, not like what I showed you early on with the uh, flowering plants. And so to really know if a mother plant's infected, um, one needs to go in and take samples. And the industry-wide recommendation has been to take uh, leaf samples from lower down in the plant. The idea being that these are older leaves and they would have picked up some of the viroids. So leaves and petioles are, are a good source or has been used as a good source for um, detection of the viroid. And you can send these off to a commercial lab. There's many labs now in Canada and the U.S. that will run a hop latent viroid test for you and tell you whether or not the viroid is present. So here's what we did. We basically took these mother plants and we sampled from the top, which is sample one, from the side, sample two, from the bottom, sample three, and then the roots, the root system, sample four. And as you can see in this mother plant, all four samples were positive for hop latent viroid because you can see these bands that, that I referred to earlier. So it's there, it's present. But look at the plant, it looks good. I mean, it's healthy. There's no uh, leaf curl, there's no mosaic, there's no stunting. The plant looks fine, but it's got hop latent in it. Here's another mother plant. In this case, we sampled one, two, three, four, and guess what? We couldn't find it in three. So three is the sample down here, the, the bottom of the plant, the lower, the older leaves was negative. And yet the upper leaves and the side leaves and the roots were positive. So the distribution can vary. Uh, you can, depending on the mother plant, you may find it uh, down here or you may not. And that obviously has really important implications if you're going to use these plants to grow uh, your next crop. So we ran a couple of uh, analyses and, and we worked with a company out in our area called Three, Three Rivers Lab and they ran some analyses for us comparing leaf samples, petiole samples and root samples. And as you can see in all of these samples here on the left, these various genotypes, wherever we found it, wherever it was present, it was always found in the roots but not always in the leaves and not always in the petioles. In other words, the root tissues seem to have a, a higher affinity or uh, a likelihood of, of carrying this viroid more so than the leaves and the petioles. And so I just wrote down in here, root samples appear to be the most sensitive for sampling. And after we completed the study, or at about the same time we completed the study, we ran a whole bunch of more samples, as you can see here. and. The, the roots can be taken from any part of the root system, but ideally um, the actively growing part or even roots that are further down in here that have that have developed better are good sources for testing for, for hop latent viroid. And as we were doing these studies, a report came out from Tumi Genomics that also found that the hop latent viroid levels and distribution is much more consistent in the roots than it is anywhere else in the plant. And they recommended as well that roots be used for sampling for this particular um, pathogen. And similarly, uh, medicinal genomics came out with a similar finding. Uh, what they found, as you can see here, uh, 15 samples from roots that were positive and only one sample that was positive in the leaves. And again, the recommendation they made is that you can really much easier find hoplate viroid in, in the roots as you would compared to the, to the leaves. And I'll come back to this in a minute as to why we're seeing so much of the viroid in the roots. So now if you were to take clones from a, a, a plant that was infected compared to one that was healthy, you can see right away that the performance of that infected plant on the left here, the clone, is much reduced. And you're seeing very similar symptoms of stunting, reduced leaf growth, and so on. So right away, if you have a healthy plant to compare with, you'll see that these, these clones are not doing well. And when you look at the roots, of course, 
uh, you can see the root system is much more reduced in its size compared to the healthy. So this is one of the problems that growers will see is that my, my clones, my cuts are not rooting well. Can't understand why. I've done everything the same way. And it may be that you've got hop latent viroid. If you've got a comparison you can make with a healthy plant, which shows you that it's rooted really well in, in two weeks compared to this plant. So that's your first sign. You may have problems with infected mothers that are giving rise to infected um, cuttings. And that's one way that this viroid will spread quite easily. If you look at the roots uh, here in Rocco, again on the left is infected, on the right is healthy, and you can see the root, root system has been reduced considerably. And we don't know why yet, but these genes that I talked about earlier that are turned off as a result of virus and viroid infection are probably having an effect on rooting. And that's not a good thing, obviously, because your plants are not going to get well established from the get-go. Here's a comparison we made where we looked at three different genotypes. Up on the top, you can see they haven't rooted very well. The bottom, they've rooted okay, and, the, and, the, and some of them have rooted better. These are all taken after uh, 14 days. And um, we knew that every one of these cuts came from an infected mother plant. And so when we ran the, uh, the PCR gel, you can see right here on the bottom, every single one of those clones, or every single one of those cuts had hop latent viroid in it. So that's 100% transmission. Um, the mother plants were visibly affected in the sense they looked like they had something was wrong with them. And so we, we confirmed that by showing that 100% of them, of the cuts, had hop latent viroid in it. So that's a very effective way for this viroid to move from other plants into your next, next cropping cycle. Here's another uh, experiment we ran where we looked at two different genotypes at different times. So after we initiated, uh, after roots were initiated at various times, like four days, eight days, and 12 days later, you can see that hop latent viroid is barely starting to show up in this particular genotype. But if you look over here on the right-hand side, you can see that even at time zero, which is when the roots were just coming out, they were all infected. So there is going to be a difference in terms of the genetic background of the mother plant that you're dealing with. Some seems to seem to be very susceptible to moving the viroid into the next generation of cuts, others less so. And we need to do some more testing here to find out what the reason behind this is, why some uh, genotypes seem to carry the viroid much more easier than others. The impact, of course, when you have reduced root system, you're going to have slower growing plants, uh, poor cuttings that are rooted. Uh, the root development that's reduced will cause your flowers to be smaller, reduced growth, reduced vigor, and so on. And we have some data that suggests that these plants that have reduced root systems are more susceptible to things like Fusarium. Fusarium root rot is more severe on hop latent infected cuttings than on healthy. So that, that's some other implications for other disease, diseases showing up in, in, your, um, in your production facility. So here it is. This is the most classic or the most definitive symptom when you go into a flower room is when you see these stunted plants right here compared to healthy plants on your left. And that's sort of how we can go through and pick out and be able to say this one looks like it's got an infection, this one doesn't. But you still need that molecular test to confirm that you're dealing with hop latent and not something else. Now, we've looked at THC uh, and CBD and terpenes in these infected plants. This happens to be a plant uh, that was infected on the bottom, as you see here with the stunted growth, and appeared healthy up at the top. And we confirmed that using the DNA testing. This was hop latent negative, and this was hop latent positive. The reason this plant is so important is that now we can make a direct comparison of the impact on things like THC. And what you see here in the healthy portion of the plant, 27.8% THC. And down here, it's 15.9. You're looking at about a 40% reduction. Terpenes, about 1.3. And down here, 1.1, about a 10% reduction in uh, terpenes. So right away, you can see when you've got that reduced growth, as well as some other things, um, you're dropping your THC levels by a considerable amount as a result of the infection by this viroid. 
We've looked at the, the trichomes that are produced uh, on these uh, plants that are infected with hop latent. On the left, you see sort of a diagrammatic representation of a healthy trichome. And on the right is what we see in the microscope as uh, trichomes that are coming from plants that have hop latent viroid. You can see they're stunted, they're small, they're not well developed. And I'm gonna show you a, a dramatic comparison using a electron microscope that really indicates the difference between healthy trichomes or trichomes from healthy plants and from those that are infected with hop latent. They're smaller, they're collapsed, they're not building up as much cannabinoids uh, and, and THC and terpenes. And as a result, your yields are down 30 to 40%. So this is the most dramatic illustration I can show you to indicate how this viroid is impacting um, the production of THC and other, and other cannabinoids. Okay, so how does it spread? We talked about cuttings. Cuttings from infected mother plants are a really uh, important way for this viroid to spread. I'll show you some data that shows it also spreads through sap. When you're pruning plants, if the, if the pruning tools or the hands are carrying a sap from an infected plant, there's a chance that you can spread it to other plants. Because it's so high in the roots, as we talked about before, there is the chance that the viroid can also spread through root contact, as well as through water, uh, recycled water that may be containing root cells that came from infected plants. And finally, I'll show you some data that indicates that this viroid can also move through seed. Um, and this was work done at, at uh, one of the labs that I'll mention in a minute here, um, uh, Tumi Genomics, that's done some of this, this work. What about insects? We don't know for sure whether insects can move uh, hop latent viroid other than um, a study by Three Rivers did show that the cannabis root aphid will pick up the viroid. We don't know if it can transmit it or not, but it can pick it up. But for now, the most important areas are cuttings, uh, mechanically through sap, through root contact or water, and through seed. So here's the experiment we did where we demonstrated using a Q-tip. You, you dip that into sap from an infected plant, you make a cut at the top, you dab it with the sap, and you wait for two to three weeks. And then what we did was we sampled, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way through the plant. And what you see here in the gel on the right-hand side is that after two weeks, the first place that we found it was in sample number six. And sample number six happens to be the roots. And the other place where we found it was sample number one, which happens to be right here, the top of the plant. So what this showed us is that when you have infection that occurs up here, the first location that the viroid seems to go is down into the roots and then up into the youngest part of the plant. That's, that's the way in which it's moving. And if you take these plants further and grow them up into six weeks, you can see right away again from these gels that every part of the plant has got hop latent viroid in it. So remember, we, we inoculated up here. This is where you'd be taking your cuttings. And presumably, if you had infected tools, the viroid would get in here, move down to your roots, number one, move up to the young foliage, number two, and then it would show up here in number three. So within about four to six weeks, your entire plant has become infected with um, hop latent viroid. And this is how we know uh, these viroids to spread. This is work done with potato spindle <clears throat> tuber viroid, which is in the same family as hop latent. And if you inoculate a leaf, as you see up here, the arrows show you, first of all, it heads down to the roots, which is what I just showed you. It then goes up to the youngest part of the plant, which I showed you, and then it starts to move systemically. And what that means is that it gets into the phloem. The phloem is the tissue that's running up and down in here it gets into the phloem and starts moving throughout the plant. And so it's a very efficient way that this thing is basically being trafficked or moved throughout the plant from cell to cell, um, moving through these openings that are called um, plasma desmata. So it's quite efficient at moving its way around the, the cannabis plant. We did the second experiment, which is what happens if you have an infected plant growing right next to a healthy plant in uh, this artificial system, which is a cloner, you can see the infected plant has a much smaller root system. The healthy plant has a big root system. 
they weren't in contact with one another, but the, the nutrient solution was flowing uh, in here in this cloner. And after two weeks, when we came back and we sampled from the healthy plants, you can see right here again, R meaning the roots, the, 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 um, the viroid was present in the roots of these plants that didn't have hop latent before. No physical contact, just, just movement of solution in this hydroponic system. So there is likelihood that um, under production systems like this, you can have movement of the, um, of the viroid. And the way we think it moves is pretty much root cells that are sloughed off. As the roots grow, they slough off their cells. And these, these are some examples of photos that show these broken off root cells or root tips and root caps and so on. It's quite likely that the viroid is present in these cells and is then being moved in the water from, from one area to another. So we did one more experiment, and that is take uh, healthy plants, as you see up here on your left, and another healthy plant over here on the right. And we introduced a infected, hop latent infected plant and made sure there was a distance between these two plants. The only thing that was moving back and forth from these plants is water. We flooded this, this particular tray and waited for a couple of weeks. And what we found where we had um, a healthy plant previously, that the hop latent viroid moved over in the water at a frequency of about 20%. So we had about a 20% infection rate when um, a healthy plant was on one side and hop latent in the other. And the only thing that was moving back and forth was, was water, water that's being flooded in the trays. So it, it certainly can move through these root cells that I um, referred to earlier. And so, of course, once it gets into the roots, it has to make its way through the rest of the plant. And this is what we call systemic spread. And we know from other studies and studies that I'll show you now that if you've got a flowering plant, which, which has male flowers and female flowers and rapidly growing leaves, there's a good chance that this viroid will move through the vascular system, through the phloem, up into the flowering tissues. And this is why we think it's possible to get um, seed infection as a result. So we looked at what impact um, putting a plant under the 12-12 normal flowering period has on the movement of hop latent viroids. So what you see here were two infected plants. These are both infected. One was left under a very high photo period or 24 hours of light. And the other plant was placed under a reduced photo period or 12 hours of light. And you can see that the, the vegetative plant keeps growing. This other plant has flipped over to flower. And when you look at the concentration of hop latent viroid, it was quite surprised that when you have a plant that's growing vegetatively under 24-hour period, we know it's infected because it's in the roots, but it never moved up into the lower leaves or the upper leaves or the flowers. But when you put that plant into a flowering situation, 12 hours of photo period, notice the dramatic spread of hop latent viral way into the flowers, upper flowers and, and lower leaves and so on. We don't really know why. All we know is that the 12-hour photo, photo period that's used to flower is causing this viroid to move, or at least to be distributed into the flowers. And so, so much so that when we sampled um, dried flower buds from various locations and various uh, production facilities, 40% of them, as shown here in this gel, 40% of them had hot latent viroid present in the dried flower, which, which certainly is, it gives you room for thought that some of the products that are out there being sold may actually have hop latent viroid in them unknowingly as a result of infection of plants that were going in the flower. And that's something to consider as well in terms of the levels of THC. So if it gets into those flowers, is it gonna get into male flowers? And is it gonna get into female flowers? And the answer is yes. We looked at male plants or plants that were induced to undergo male flower production. And as you can see from the gels here, uh, plant number one had very low levels of the viroid. Plant number two, very intense banding that came not just in the flowers, but in the anthers. So these anthers that are found in here were actually had hop latent viroid in them. And so here's some data that uh, Tumi Genomics sent over to me for, for a study that they did in conjunction with, with um, Texas A&M. 
And they took uh, female plants that were positive for hop latent and crossed them with male plants that were negative. And they also took female plants that were negative and crossed them with male plants that were positive. And what they found in both instances, what you could find the viroid present on the seed coat, but also um, inside the seed. And they shared the, this data with me to show you that depending on the mother plant or the female plant, as you see here, all of them have a high proportion of seeds that have hop latent viroid in them, as well as situations where the male plant was infected, produced infected pollen. Also, a lot of the seeds had hop latent viroid in them. So the differences you see here between one mother plant and the next are probably due to the, the viral, viral load or the load of the, the viroid in the plant. So it does vary quite a bit. But the data that they um, presented shows that it is possible for hop latent to move through the pollen and um, through the ovules in the, in the seed. So much so that some of the infection rates in seedlings that were germinated from these seeds was as high as 40%, a big range, 23 to 53%. So these are seedlings that came out from these infected crosses are giving rise to infected plants. So there's another way that hop latent viroid is going to be able to move from um, one generation to the next. In addition to cuttings, in addition to roots and water, it's also possible to move through seed. What are the management options? I'm going to uh, probably stop here so that we can get into the, the discussion. Um, certainly uh, certified disease plant, plant material, plants that are presumably uh, produced in tissue culture from meristem tips, are going to be uh, potentially useful for, for eliminating the viroid. Anything that you bring into your facility that potentially could have hop latent viroid should be tested uh, with these molecular techniques that are out there before you actually plant them out. We know from studies we've done and others, the viroid is heat stable. Um, and so it is transmitted through pruning tools, handling of plants by workers. Sanitation is extremely important. Uh, right now, the recommendations are bleach and burkhan. Um, there's hydrogen peroxide and other chemicals that have not been tested yet, but we think that uh, for now, certainly uh, bleach seems to be uh, quite effective in uh, minimizing the spread of hop latent, but you have to get up to at least 20%, which is obviously a problem when it comes to handling um, these types of plants. So with that, I'm going to um, stop and we'll um, resume the uh, panel discussion. Thank you very much for, for listening. All right. Thank you so much for that. That um, covered a lot in a very short amount of time. Uh, we have tons of questions. Uh, we are going to be joining over on the other panel that is about to fire up. So all this is going to be discussed over there. So you can bring your questions over there. And uh, with that, everybody. Uh, I will put the link back in the chat one more time for everybody, and we will be heading over there. So cheers. <laughs>